My name is Daniel Kwan, and this is Bishop Montgomery High School Math Theory Club. We're located in Torrance Boulevard, and today we're going to talk about 2005 AP Calculus BC Free Response Question Form B number 5. Number 5A states, show that dy dx equal to y over 2y minus x. So before we begin, what is dy dx? dy dx is slope of function y. And also, to write it more clearly, we can say dy dx equal to y prime. This is another notation to write dy dx in Newton form. So let's start. We have to show or prove that the slope of this function becomes this. What do we use? dq, differential equation. So when we differentiate y squared with y, it will become 2y y prime equal to, and because this is real number, this cancels out, and now jump right here. With the product rule, it will become x y prime plus, now y stays the same and x differentiates, which will become y. And now, because we're solving for dy dx, we have to put y prime to left side and other variables to right side. So, 2y y prime minus x y prime equal to y. Just move it here. And then the next step is factor it out by y prime. This will become 2y minus x y. And lastly, y equal to y over 2y x. Part B. Part B says, find all points x and y on the curve where the line tangent to the curve has slope of 1 half. So that means this dyx, y over 2y minus x, has to equal 1 half. So let's write it down. y 2y minus x equal to 1 half. When we use the cross multiplication, it will become 2y equal to 2y minus x. And when I move x to this side and y to this side, 2y, it will become x because we moved x here, 2y minus 2y. And now it's obvious x equals to 0. This means that at this function, which is the slope, when x, equal, x is equal to 0, that means the y, the slope, is 1 half. So, we have to figure out the coordinates of y. So, let's use the original function, which is y squared equal to 2 plus, and because we're plugging in 0 here, and what times 0 is always 0, a number times 0 is always 0, so it will become 0. That means when we square root this, which is square, this will become y equal to plus minus 2 radical 2. So, one thing you have to be careful is, when you are square rooting this, you have to put plus and minus because both works. Sometimes many people just put plus and get one point wrong. However, you always have to put minus, plus and minus for both. That means, to organize everything, you have to say when x equals to 0 and y equals to plus radical 2 and 0 and minus radical 2, the slope of the function y, or you can say f of x, is equal to 1 half. So this is answer for part b. Part c. Part c says, show that there are no points on coordinates x, y on the curve where the line tangent to the curve is horizontal. So before we begin, let's just make sure. Our graph is x, y, horizontal, 
the slope is 0. So we just can say dy dx or y prime is 0. So y 2y minus x equal to 0. So sometimes there are students who cross multiply this and get this question wrong. However, let's think simply. When, some, when a fraction has to be equal to 0, that means the top part has to equal 0. Because if we make the bottom part equal 0, it will be something y or the variable y or x, 0, and this is undefined. So the top part, which is, which is the numerator, has to equal 0. That means because the numerator it is y by itself, y will always equal 0. So let's jump to the original function, which is when we plug y as 0 to y, it will become 0 squared equal to 2 plus, like before, when we multi multiply 0 to any number or anything, it will become 0 all the time, which is obvious, <laughs> which will become 0 equal to 2. Does this make sense? No. Thus, the question says, show that there are no points on coordinates x, y on the curve curve where the line tangent to the curve is horizontal. We just proved that 0 is not equal to 2, and this is the only case when the slope is 0. Thus, because 0 does not equal 2, you can write it numerically, it doesn't matter. That is because 0 does not equal 2, there are no points x comma y on curve where the tangent to the curve is horizontal and this showing this works and this with this explanation will give you the full credit part d part d says let x and y be functions of the time t that are related by the equation y squared 2 plus xy at time t equals to 5, the value of y is 3 and dy dt is equal to 6. Find the value of dy, dx dt at the time t equal to 5. Thus, right now, for this problem, part d, we're only talking about when the time is equal to t. So let's write down t is equal to 5. Also, because we were talking about dy dt or dy, dx dt, this means differential equation again. So let's do this again. At this time, because we are differentiating by t, we cannot write y prime. However, we should write dy dt and dx dt because there are three different variables by t. So, when we differentiate this, this will become 2y dy dt because we are differentiating by t, t goes at the bottom, equal to becomes 0. And now, first stays the same, second changes. So, x dy dt plus, now, y stays the same, but x changes. So, dx dt y. Now, we can just plug in the number. So, because it says, at time t equal to 5, the value of y is 3, so we can put 2, 3, and, and dy, d, dy dt is equal to 6 when time is 5. So, 6. Because we're only talking about t equals to 5, when the time is equal to 5, we can just plug in the information about t equals to 5. dy dt again, 6, x plus dx dt. and y, which is 3. So when we look at this, we notice 
We do not know dx dt, we, we have to solve for it and we do not know also x. So let's solve for x. So, when t is equal to 5, let's use the original function, which is y squared equal to 2 plus xy. Because at time t equal to 5, the value of y is 3, we can put 3 squared equals to 2 plus 3y, which will become 2 and 99 equal to 2 plus 3y. So, sorry about this. This will go one. Sorry about this mistake. And because we're solving for x, sorry about this. So, x will become 7 over 3. So, let's put this x into here. So, when we calculate, what is 3 times 6? 18 times 2, 36. Equal to 6 times, so 6 times 7 over 3 plus dx dt3. So let's leave this alone. Before that, let's cancel this out. 1, 2, which will become 14. So 36, 14 plus dx dt3. And when we move this side, it will become. 3 dx dt equal to what is 36 minus 14? It is 22. 22. And now everything is done. We just need to multiply one third on each side, which will become cancels out, right? So dx dt is equal to 22 over 3. And this will be your answer for part D. Because it says, find the value of dx dt at time equals to 5. Thank you for watching, and I wish this video helps you for the test.